वल्लभा जया गिरी वरधारी जया गिरी वरधारी यशोदा नंदना जय व्रज जना रंजना जय यशोदा नंद जय यशोदा नंदना जय व्रज जना रंज जय यमुना तिरवन चारी जय कुंज बिहारी वन चारी जय कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव जय कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव जय कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव जय कुंज बिहारी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे गोविंद राधे जय गौरानीताय 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 जय गौरानीताय जय जय प्रभुपात प्रभुपात जय प्रभु नीताय गौर हरि बो हरि बो हरि बो गौर हरि बो पा 
पाद पर हम सब परिव्रज का चरण स्तोत्र सत श्री श्री मस डिवाइन ग्रेस अभय चरण अरविंद भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी शील प्रभुपाद की इस कौन फाउंडर आचार्य बिबिट फाउंडर आचार्य सेवा ऑफ द होल वर्ल्ड जगत गुरु श्रील प्रभुपाद की जय ओम विष्णु पाद परम हम सब परिव्रज का आचार्य स्तोत्र सत श्री श्रीमद हिज डिवाइन ग्रेस भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती गोस्वामी महाराज शील प्रभुपाद की अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की नामाचार्य श्री लहरीदास ठाकुर की प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्री वासादि कौर भक्त वृंद की श्री श्री राधा गोविंद देव की श्री श्री गौनताय की श्री लभुपाद की ग्रंथरा श्रीमद्भागवतम की नेताय कौर प्रेमानंदे All glories to assemble devotees. All glories to assemble devotees. All glories to assemble devotees. All glories, all glories, all glories to Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर नष्ट प्राएशो भद्रेशु नित्यम भागवत सेवया भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्ठिकी कृष्णाय वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय च नंद गोपकुमाय गोविंदय नमो नम हरे कृष्ण वी आर रीडिंग फ्रॉम कैंटो थ्री चैप्टर ट्वेंटी टू एंड टाइटल द मैरिज ऑफ कर्दम मुनि एंड देवहूति टेक्स्ट थ्री तस्रपात हृदय तस् ही ब्रह्म क्षत्र अंगं प्रचक्षते तत्रायासचास्मास्रात हृदय तस् ही ब्रह्म क्षत्र अंगं प्रचक्षते तत्रायासचास्मा दोसहस्रासहस्रपात हृदय तस् ही ब्रह्म क्षत्र अंगं प्रचक्षते
Matajis? Word to word. Tatranaya. For the protection of the Brahmanas. Asajat. Created. Cha. And. Asman. As. Kshatriyas. Those Hasrat. From his thousand arms. Sahasrapat. The thousand legged supreme being. The universal form. Hridayam, heart. Tasya, his, he, for. Brahma, Brahmanas. Kshatram, the Kshatriyas. Angam, arms. Tachakshate, are spoken of. Translation of purple by Shri Prabhupada. Translation for the protection of the Brahmanas, the thousand legged supreme being created us, the Kshatriyas, from his thousand arms. Hence the Brahmanas are said to be his heart and the Kshatriyas his arms. Purport. Kshatriyas are specifically, are specifically meant to maintain the Brahmanas because if the Brahmanas are protected, then the head of the civilization is protected. Brahmanas are supposed to be the head of the social body. If the head is clear and has not gone mad, then everything is in proper position. The Lord is described thus, Namo Brahmanya Devaya Go Brahmana Hitaya Cha. The purport of this prayer is that the Lord specifically protects the Brahmanas and the cows, and then He protects all other members of the society. Jagadditaya. It is His will that universal welfare work depends on the protection of cows and Brahmanas. Thus, Brahmanical culture and cow protection are the basic principles for human civilization. Kshatriyas are especially meant to protect the Brahmanas, as is the supreme will of the Lord. Go Brahmana Hitayacha. As within the body, the heart is a very important part, so the Brahmanas are also the important element in the human society. The Kshatriyas are more like the whole body. Even though the whole body is bigger than the heart, the heart is more important. Om Ajnan Timirandhasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurve Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Niti Namine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschat Deshatarine Vancha Kalpatarubhya Chakrpasan Dubya Evacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namaha Jay Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Before I begin I would like to seek the blessings of all the assembled devotees so that something worthwhile can be spoken, something in parampara, and you have also have something to take back home. Any corrections you may find in uh, with whatever discrepancies may be there, you can feel free to take the mic at the end of the class and speak it out. 
हरे कृष्णा तत्राणाय सृज्ज चास्मा दो सहस्रा सहस्रपात हृदय तस् ही ब्रह्म क्षत्र अंगम प्रचक्षते फॉर द प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ द ब्राह्मण द थाउजेंड लेगेज सुप्रीम बीइंग क्रिएटेड अस द क्षत्रिय फ्रॉम हिज thousand arms hence the brahmana says to be his heart and the kshatriyas is arms actually if you read the purush sukta it says sahasra shira sa purushah sahasra aksha sahasra paat sabhumim vishvato vritva atyatashta dashangulam purusham evedakam sarvam yad bhuta yad cha bhavyam so like this actually it is giving the universal creation by the supreme lord uh, sahasra shirsha means the supreme lord is thousand headed he has thousand heads sahasra shirsha purusha sahasra akshat sahasra paat that means he has thousand eyes akshat and then uh, sahasra paat that means in thousand legs so like this uh, purusha sukta gives the description of the universal being and later on it says brahmano mukamasita that means uh, the brahmanas come from the uh, they form the head of the supreme lord of the universal form of the supreme lord then it says bahura janya krtaha that means the uh, kshatriyas they form the limbs of the universal body bahura janya krtaha vai uh, Uh, basically it says vaisha from the belly and padbhyagam shudra ajayata that means the shudras come from the the legs of the universal body the supreme lord i think i have it written down let me just be correct yeah brahmano samukma asit bahu rajne krtaha uru tadasya vaisha so uru comes from the thighs huh? uru is belly or thigh tadasya vaisha padbhyagam shudra ajayata Mm-hmm. So this is the, in the Purush Sukta. Why Sri Prabhupada says the Brahmanas are compared to the head of the uh, universal. Uh, of course, they come from the universal uh, body, from the head uh, aspect, and also they form the head of the society, the social structure. That means, if there is no head, what is the use of simply headless beings walking here and there? Isn't it? That means there is no vision. so the brahmanas because they learned in scriptures and of course we'll see what are the characteristics of brahmana therefore they actually give vision to the society and kshatriyas are supposed to protect the brahmanas because the brahmanas will not waste time in protecting themselves for example in ramayan you will find that when vishwamitra he comes to the uh, court room of king dashrath then he comes with one agenda and one knows what the agenda is what did he want to take yeah to take to take lord ram to protect the fire sacrifice which he was performing in the forest mm-hmm. then of course king dashrat says but my dear lord ram is so dear to me that i cannot even be in separation from him even for a moment what to talk about taking lord ram and putting him in the risk of being killed by ravana's soldiers impossible i'll not let that happen but of course then vishwamitra said but when i came to your court room you promised and you asked me that whatever you want tell me i will fulfill it then why are you going back on your words so then uh, king dashrath was in a dilemma because he didn't want to part from lord ram but at the same time being a kshatriya he cannot go back on his words but at the same time he was willing to go back on his words but not give lord ram so therefore then uh, vasishta the family guru the kula guru of uh, dashrath he had to step in and he uh, stepped in and he told king uh, dashrath my dear king don't worry because lord ram is a supreme person of god it and along with lord ram will also accompany lakshman so both of them when they go no he they are not uh, defeatable by anyone and uh, anyways our vishwamitra he himself is a now he has become a brahmarishi but earlier he was 
King Kaushik, a Kshatriya. So actually he himself can kill them. But just because while performing fire sacrifice, he cannot engage in fight because that then he will succumb to mode of passion. He will come down from the mode of goodness to mode of passion. Then the fire sacrifice is spoiled. Therefore the Brahmanas don't protect themselves. Isn't it? So therefore uh, Vishwamitra came to get, uh, get and take uh, Ram with him to protect the fire sacrifice. Why? Because the Brahmanas, you will find in 4th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, when King Vena came to power and he was creating so much of atrocities to the point that he was telling everyone to stop all the sacrifices to Lord Vishnu and start worshipping me as a supreme god. Then the Brahmanical committee above him, they decided we have to do something. Of course, this Brahmanical committee was appointed by King Anga, his father. Therefore, it was still existing. So now when the Brahmanas came together, they thought, We'll go to King Vena and with polite words tell him not to do these things and start worshipping Lord Vishnu before anything wrong happens. And then uh, they go to King Vena and uh, they request Vena, please stop, cease from your wrongdoings, don't go against scriptural injunctions. So then uh, King Vena said, what are these nonsensical scriptures, who is this uh, Lord Vishnu, I am your Lord. Just worship me. So to how much ever King Vena would tell uh, the Brahminical committee would urge King Vena to stop his atrocities, King Vena would not uh, heed to their request. So therefore, the Brahminical committee, they all, all the Brahmanas came together. They put their uh, hand in their uh, Brahmin thread. Mm, they held the Brahmagant. And at the same time with the one humkara, a unison of all the humkaras. Hmm. With one humkara, they destroyed King Vena. He was burnt to ashes. So it's not, but at what risk? They lost their tapabal. All the strength of the austerities is lost. So therefore, a Brahmana, if he wants to have good vision, if he wants to maintain his austerities, if he wants to have his uh, consciousness uh, at a high state of, on the platform of Krishna consciousness, he generally doesn't engage in anything to do with lower modes. That means lust, hunger, greed. He doesn't succumb. Therefore, Brahmana has clear vision. And therefore, the remaining society, especially the Kshatriyas, they have to protect the Brahmanas because they are giving the vision. Now, if they stop giving vision and they also become take the occupation of a Kshatriya, then who will give vision? Therefore, there is Kshatriya class. So, uh, therefore, Sri Prabhupada says, you know, today we have a so-called democracy in which uh, today's democracy is uh, for the Shudras, of the Shudras and by the Shudras. That means none of them are learned in the Vedic scriptures, but they are trying to be learned and because they are not Brahmanical, they are all motivated by selfish interests. Just imagine if a Vaishya becomes the ruler of the society. So if Vaishya becomes ruler of society, all his decisions will be geared in one direction. What is that direction? Money making direction, isn't it? Similarly, sometimes even in organization, sometimes the top leader may be a Vaishya. So he will invest all his energy and resources in a direction to gain money. Fund collection is the most important aspect, isn't it? Everything else will stop. Similarly, if some Shudra becomes the uh, head of the society, very dangerous. Why? He, will, he can actually quote scriptures, he will use arguments, science, logic, everything to say why prostitution should be allowed, why uh, intoxication should be allowed, hmm? abortion should be allowed, everything should be allowed. Why? Because Shudra has sat over there at the top. Because he doesn't have vision. Why doesn't he have vision? Because it doesn't refer to scriptures. Yes, Shastra Vidya Mutsajja Vartate Kama Karataha Nasa Siddhya Mavapnoti Nasukham Na Param Gatim One who rejects the scriptures, he gets no happiness, no perfection of life and no ultimate destination. So because uh, Brahmanas, their duties are Yajan Yajan Patan Patan Dan Pratigya. That means they engage in sacrifices. Yajna. They uh, perform sacrifices or get sacrifices done 
they uh, study scriptures or are taught scriptures. That means they like to study. It's a Brahminical nature to study. And they give in charity or accept charity. These are the activities of a Brahmana. So therefore we need Brahminical class of people. And Sri Prabhupada multiple times you will hear in his lectures or books or his morning walks. Multiple times Sri Prabhupada said the only purpose of expanding Krishna consciousness movement is to make more Brahmanas. <laughs> And of course, as Krishna says himself, that Varnashrama was created by him. Chatur Varnya Maya Shastam Gunakarma Vibhagashaha. So, therefore, Brahmana is not by Brahminical thread, even in our organization, not by Brahminical thread. Sometimes, for the purpose of services, Brahman initiation is given. But such a Brahmana, if he is still continuing to go outside and eat in restaurants and, you know, not come for morning program, what is Brahmanical in that? So sometimes sitting here, we can criticize in India, oh, their brahmanas think that they are brahmanas because by, they are born as brahmanas by birth. And here, we ourselves are not, you know, having the, or cultivating qualities of brahmanas, but we may have a brahmanical thread, isn't it? So brahmana is not simply by brahmanical thread, whether it's in India or it's in Iskand, anywhere. It's by gunakarma vibhagashaha. Can you take out 1841? Gita, Bhagavad Gita, 1841. Krishna says here also. Hmm. Actually, it's very easy to spot out a Brahmana. Once there was a small child who approached a great sage and he asked, he requested this great sage, My dear sage, I want to be expert in the Vedic understanding. Can you please teach me? So the sage said, I don't know who, who are you. I don't know what is your family connection, what family you are from. Please come and go to your parents and ask that what is your background, what is your caste, what, who are you really? So this boy, his name was Satyakama. Satyakama said, uh, sure, yes Guruji, I will go to my, teach, uh, my parents and ask. But actually he went to his mother. And he asked his mother, My dear mother, please tell me, who is my father? Because that's how you get to know the Gotra, the lineage. So she said, uh, actually, my dear son, before you were born, prior to your birth, I was in such a, a position that I had to take up the occupation of a prostitute where I had to sleep with multiple men, unfortunately, just for survival. So therefore, I do not know who exactly is your father. And what did the boy do? He went to his uh, Guruji and he told him the exact same thing. Actually, I went to, went to my mother and asked that who my father is. But she said because she has slept with multiple men, she doesn't know. So I don't know what is my Gotra. Immediately the sage said, you, are, you, are, you must be a Brahmana. Why? <laughs> you are completely truthful. It's too truthful, isn't it? So therefore, Brahmana, he... Uh, Brahmana is so much guided by mode of goodness that he cannot speak a lie. Hmm. He is uh, truthful, he is peaceful, he is sense controlled. Hmm. Actually there is a saying, Brahmana bhajana priya. That means Brahmanas are, they like bhajan very much. Hmm. But gradually in India nowadays they say Brahmana bhojana priya. <laughs> Because nowadays Brahmanas only because they wear some thread, they are very uh, famous for attending ceremonies and eating a lot. So you just give them a lot of sweets and they just sit and eat. Sometimes they don't even know the mantras. Actually one of our devotees, he after practicing Krishna consciousness for some time, he went back home. And that, uh, that priest who was invited to conduct some homa, he was reciting Purusukta or some Vedic uh, from some, somewhere from the Vedas and he was he started Purusukta but ended half he started quoting some Bhagavad Gita but that was also everything was improper so immediately this boy my friend he could he was pointing out and he was saying okay what is the meaning of this why did you end it in half so that priest got fed up and he left why because we don't know Sanskrit and today in the name of being Brahminical people actually simply misuse so, 
they got 1841 yeah can someone read in the mic one of you quickly Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas, and Sutras are distinguished by the quality and form of their own nature in accordance with the material modes of chastisement at the end. Yeah. So therefore, uh, yeah, you can go to a 42, second, next verse. Here Krishna says that they're all distinguished by their qualities. Yeah, these are the qualities of Brahmanas. Can you read? <coughs> Yeah. How many of you like wisdom? Really, you, you are keen on getting more wisdom. Wherever there is a Bhagavatam class going on, you want to go and sit versus Prashadam. Yeah. So our keen, our uh, interest in gaining wisdom is a Brahmanical nature. So peacefulness, oh I need the previous verse. Peacefulness, self-control, austerity. How many of you like to be austere? Get up a little early, chant little extra rounds. Huh? What are the austerities? Eat simple. <laughs> Eat once a day <laughs> or twice a day. <laughs> Isn't these are austerities? Tapo divyam putra kaena satvam shuddhye yasmat brahma saukyam tonantam. Rishabdev says, Tapo divyam putra kaena satvam. Because these austerities are performed by those in mode of goodness. Chuddhyet purifies. Yasmat Brahma Saukyam Tonantam. Only when we perform these austerities, we can get higher taste in bhakti. But without being in mode of goodness, we cannot actually perform austerities. Not possible. Mode of passion can perform austerities, but they are not sustainable austerities. Like we can immediately start uh, take a resolution, New Year resolution. This year, I will not eat sweets, and it will last for that day. <laughs> Next day, you will eat sweets. Isn't it? Because it's not possible. Mode of passion, any... Uh, actually, it, it comes, I think, in Gita. Determination, the three modes. Determination, mode of passion is you take it up and give it, lose it. Determination, mo mode of goodness is a sustainable determination. That means, when you take a vow, you can do it throughout. As mode of goodness, isn't it? So therefore, austerity, purity. Hmm. How, many, how many of you like to be pure? To purify our hearts, and you're attracted towards anything that is pure. Yeah? Okay, not many hands for this. <laughs> Actually, purity attracts purity. Impurity attracts impurity. Mm. Sometimes we go, there, there can be two brahmacharis. One can, one brahmachari says, say, both go to Times Square. One brahmachari says, Prabhu, no need to go around and walk around here too much. There's not uh, good vibes here. Mm. Other Prabhu says, Prabhu, don't uh, be a fanatic. Let's go around and... We also need to know the material world to, you know, preach sometimes. Isn't it? So why, now what is the problem? One Brahmachari, he is very uh, focused that he doesn't want to get deviated. Actually, being afraid of Maya is a sign of advancement in Krishna consciousness. Those who are neophytes, they take Maya too casually. As Sri Prabhupada said, my only fear with my disciples are they are not sufficiently afraid of Maya. Yeah. So therefore, uh, the other Brahmachari, the problem is, he is too careless. Why? Because he has some attraction towards Times Square environment. Why? Impurity in the heart. Impurity inside attracts impurity outside. Purity inside attracts purity outside. Similarly, when Sri Prabhupada, actually, uh, some, someone was sharing this memory of Sri Prabhupada, they were saying, how could actually Sri Prabhupada preach in the Western world? With all its, you know, grand aggrandizement, uh, so much of facilities and luxury, Sri Prabhupada would sometimes be driven in Rolls Royce and not, still not get attached. Why? There's an incident when Sri Prabhupada came to the, I think to New York City, he was in uh, downtown and he looked at the skyscrapers and he had tears in his eyes. Some disciples thought, you know, Probably Prabhupada is able to understand how much technological advancement we have made because of which he has tears in his eyes. And then Sri Prabhupada said, just see how pathetic. People are living in these matchbox type of homes and simply suffering. How much they are going far and far away from Krishna consciousness. That's why he had tears. 
Why? Because he didn't have even an inch of or an iota of attraction for the Western civilization. That means towards tall skyscrapers, towards luxuries, towards comfort homes, towards perfumes, <laughs> towards cosmetics. He had no attraction towards, uh, towards anything that the Western world was developing, bereft of Krishna consciousness. And therefore he could preach. Because if we are attached to something, how can you preach? Hmm. So, therefore what is important is purity. And tolerance of a Brahmana is not tolerance of a Kshatriya. Kshatriya also tolerates. You know when Karna wanted to get training from, who was his guru? Military guru? Parshuram. When he wanted to get training from Parshuram, he actually told, of course Parshuram is not going to train any Kshatriyas. He just wiped out 21 races of Kshatriyas. Now, so what did Karna do? He said he is a Brahmana. He lied to Parshuram. So Parshuram trained him in all the skills. Towards the end, one day when Parshuram, Parshuram was very pleased with Karna's skills and his obedience and discipline in learning. So one day towards the end of his training program, one day Parshuram was laying his head on the lap of Karna and taking rest. And Karna was also very devoted to his guru. And it so happened that an insect came and bit Karna because of which he started profusely bleeding. But he felt that I should not disturb my guru. So he tolerated the pain. And he was bleeding and bleeding. And a drop of the uh, blood touched the head of uh, Parshuram. And he immediately got up. And seeing the blood, Parshuram got so angry and he told Karna, you have to, you just get away from my eyesight right now. I don't want to see you at all. And because you lied to me that you are actually a Brahmana, but actually you are a Kshatriya. Isn't it? Now, I was thinking, actually, I thought Guruji will be very happy to see that disciple was tolerating pain. But Parshuram was not looking for that. To lie to the spiritual master is even a greater offense. Why? Because if he was a Brahmana, if once the insect would have bitten him, immediately he would have winced in pain and gotten off. Because Brahmanas, they cannot tolerate physical pain much. Whereas Kshatriya, his tolerance is different from that of Brahmana. He tolerates physical pain. For Kshatriya, if there is a wound in the chest during a war, it acts as an, uh, a booster for his enthusiasm to fight more. Isn't it? So therefore, it's very important when we understand tolerance, for tolerance of a Brahmana is tolerance, more subtler tolerance of forgiveness. That's Brahmanical. Internal, internal tolerance, but not external. Brahmana's body is a little weak. Then honesty, knowledge, wisdom and religiousness. By, by nature, he is very religious. By nature, he is very Krishna conscious and spiritual. Therefore, he can guide the society. So if these are the characteristics of a Brahmana and Brahmanas exist in Dwapar Yuga, what happened in Kali Yuga? Elsewhere I read or heard that actually all the Rakshasas, all the demons take birth in Kali Yuga as Brahmanas. You heard this? As Brahma Rakshasas. <laughs> so therefore they have big big brain but perverted intelligence. That means they go to IITs, NITs, they graduate or MITs. <laughs> MIT and they graduate and with all the intelligence, they construct a bomb to destroy the world. They, they invest their uh, knowledge in cultivating nuclear energy, finding out better and better technology so that we can fight better. It's perverted intelligence. So, we find in Srimad Bhagavatam first kind of towards the end, uh, it says how Parikshit Maharaj once out of great thirst, he went to the hermitage or the cottage of Samik Rishi, Shami Krishi, Shami Krishi, Shami Krishi. So when Shami Krishi was very deeply absorbed in his meditation and he was uh, meditating, Parikshit went and asked, please can I have some water? But he was fully absorbed in meditation. So because he, he didn't get any reply, by the will of providence, Parikshit was uh, offended and immediately there was a death snake nearby which he put around the neck of Shami Krishi and left. That's all he did. So this news was brought to the son of Shami Krishi, who was a small boy. And uh, by the friends of Shami, uh, that son, Shringi is his name. 
So when the friends brought this news to Shringi, Shringi out of great immaturity and foolishness uh, spelt out a curse that let the king of the world, King Parikshit, uh, be cursed to die in seven days by, by being bitten by Tataksha, the snake bird. Why? Because he cursed, he actually insulted my father. That's where the Brahminical class fell down. Why fall down? Because you see, Brahmana is mode of goodness, predominant. And his uh, secondary mode is passion. Kshatriya is mode of passion, predominant. And his secondary mode is goodness. Vaishya is mode of passion, predominant. Secondary mode is ignorance. More, and uh, Vashudra is mode of ignorance, predominant. And secondary mode is passion. So therefore, a Brahmana can sustain his knowledge and his vision and study of scriptures and giving, doing a welfare work till the time he is in mode of goodness. But there is danger of him always coming down to, succumbing to mode of passion or even ignorance sometimes. As we, we know, the characteristics of a Brahmana is also sukham and jnanam. Just by dint of knowledge, he does little shastric study, goes to some pages of the shastras and then he thinks, I know everything. And because I, he thinks I know everything, he can go and criticize a senior devotee, isn't it? He can put a comment on someone who is doing lot for Prabhupada's movement, isn't it? So these are the characteristics of pride being developed. And pride it cometh before fall. <laughs> That's how Brahmanas fall. Pride cometh before fall. So either they succumb to mode of passion, pride, or sometimes because they are sukham. Sukham means... They're happy in their position. They're satisfied. Prabhu, can you please come out for book distribution? No, Prabhu. I think I just read something and I'll take rest early today. You know, <laughs> there's no pushing for expanding Prabhupada's movement. There's no eagerness to uh, serve. They're satisfied in their position. Prabhu, can you take up the service? I'm satisfied. Thank you, Prabhu. I'm happy. They're in their own world. So such uh, com uh, this uh, sukham can lead to complacency in devotional service, which is in the mode of ignorance. So therefore, when the Brahmana succumbs to the lower modes of passion ignorance, that's the time he falls. So because Shringi foolishly cursed Parikshit and succumbed, being succumbed to mode of passion, he fell down from there and that's where it started. The Brahmanical class thinking that they're better than others, Kshatriyas. So therefore, this, uh, this way, the fall down of Brahminical class happened. And therefore, we also have to be careful not to succumb to lower modes. Very dangerous, even in devotional service. So if you, find, if you go to Vanipedia and put a hit on uh, cow protection and Brahminical culture, you'll find so many quotations of Sri Prabhupada, how he mentions purport after purport in Srimad Bhagavatam, that most important, two important things for Krishna is cow protection and Brahminical culture. They are that place which is devoid of Brahminical culture, Krishna doesn't even want to go there. It is a, one purport Prabhupada writes that such a place is not under direct, direct protection of Krishna. That means that place is being handled by Maya. Hmm, isn't it? Just like I, I heard this somewhere that even if, like today, now we see a lot of cow slaughter, we see a lot of, uh, so many un-Brahminical things happening. Abrahminical. <laughs> Un-Brahminical un 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 things happening in this world. So, but still the world is going on. Still nature is producing. Why? Because Prabhupada said, there are some devotees chanting Hare Krishna. So therefore it's going on. So therefore Brahmanas are supposed to be the head of the society, giving vision to the society. But who is a Brahmana? These qualities. So we are not Brahmanas. We cannot falsely think of ourselves as Brahmanas. We have Brahmanical tendencies, but we are not yet Brahmanas. Janmana jayate shudra samskara bhavet vipra samskara bhavet dvija Veda Patat Bhaved Vipra Brahma Janati Iti Brahmana. That means by birth everyone is Shudra. Someone who is born in a Brahminical family has better facility to become a Brahmana. 
Like if you are father, your parents are doctors, your cousin is a doctor, your uncle is a doctor, auntie is a doctor. Then you have better facility because you get direction on how to become a doctor. But what makes one a brahmana or a doctor or an engineer? The training they receive. So if one is not trained properly in being brahmanical or let's put it in uh, our uh, Krishna consciousness, one can actually not attain that platform of consciousness. Hmm. Actually, I, was, I recently found out, even to play chess, when I was small and I would play chess, I would think how these people are so smart, they think 10 moves ahead and all that. Hmm. So, what late, recently I found out, actually, that is also trained. Like, just like you see a Mridanga player, he is playing continuously some 16 beat or 25, 24 beat or 64 beat. Why? He is training it. And later on when he plays in Kirtan, it looks like magic because we don't know it, isn't it? Similarly, a chess player, when he plays chess, he has practiced how to uh, give a checkmate in the next 10 moves. He's practiced their ways, you know that? Similarly, how to give a checkmate in the next 3 moves, how to give a checkmate in the next 5 moves. This is all trained and therefore when he performs, it looks like magic, you know, how, how does he do this? So, there's an English saying, the more you sweat in peace, the less you bleed in war. So most important aspect of our Krishna consciousness, if we want to really contribute to expanding our Sri Prabhupada's mission is that we receive right training. We don't receive proper training, the great souls are doing great things and when someone asks Prabhu, can you help in uh, reaching out to the youths, it will look like magic. We will think, how is this happening? I don't know how to speak, I don't know how to you know, attract, I don't know how to mentor, I don't know how to counsel others. I will be just in uh, doing some service here and there, I am happy like this. Because I don't know how to preach. Why? Because we are not trained. Isn't it? We have to be trained. Even to just be a devotee, we need training. And therefore, Sri Prabhupada emphasized a lot on training program. So similarly, the Brahmanas are made, the Kshatriyas are made, all of them are made through right training. So therefore the best of brahmanas, and this is very important to mention because it is too much of a brahmana brahmana, but we have to understand what Sri Prabhupada gave the standards is following four regular principles strictly and uh, standing 16 rounds, hope if possible best in the morning time, getting up in the brahmamurta time, mm -hmm. eating only prasadam, preferably sattvic diet, that which can be offered to the deities. So this itself is a very brahmanical lifestyle, if one follows it strictly. So when we do this, automatically we come to the platform of brahmanic, uh, brahmana, but the topmost brahmana is a Vaishnava, isn't it? When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was here 500 years ago, he was asked to meet King Prataparudra, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would always avoid meeting of King Prataparudra. Why? Because he would feel the kings are always associated with two things, money and women. And I am a sannyasi. It sets such a wrong example in society. So I never want to meet King Prataparudra. So, but King Prataparudra was not an ordinary king. He was a devotee king. He was a Prataparudra Prabhu. <laughs> so therefore, because he was a Prabhu, all the other Vaishnavas would feel great, you know, mis uh, pain in their heart seeing that Prataparudra, Lord Chaitanya was not at all inclined towards meeting Prataparudra. So they gave him a solution. What was the solution? On, Rath, on the Ratyatra day, of course, uh, uh, Lord Chaitanya observed how King Prataparudra would broom, this would sweep the uh, ground before the Rath appeared. So already Lord Chaitanya had appreciation for Prataparudra. Mm -hmm. And he would also arrange for the Bengali Vaishnavas to come to Puri and reside in Jagannath Puri. So all this Lord Chaitanya knew. So he had appreciation for Prataparudra. So the Vaishnavas told Prataparudra, that uh, at this particular time, during the Ratatya time, Lord Chaitanya will be taking rest in his, in a garden nearby. So you don't go as a king, he will not meet you. But dress up yourself as a bhangi. Bhangi means a street sweeper. So Prataparudra did that. Immediately he went there and upon the direction and advice of Vaishnava society, he, he was told that, please, uh, you know, when you meet him, don't disturb him, he'll be taking rest. But sit, sit at his lotus feet and start massaging his feet. 
And he did that. And while massaging, sing Gopi Gitam. And he did that. And Lord Chaitanya was in great ecstasy, hearing such, you know, because uh, Pratap Rudra was a pure devotee. And him singing Gopi Gitam was very touching to the heart of Lord Chaitanya. And when Lord Chaitanya got to know, immediately he was uh, so happy, he immediately asked Pratap Rudra, Who are you? Please tell me, who are you? Pratap Rudra didn't expect. Just imagine if you're sleeping at night, immediately someone uh, puts blanket over you and puts pressure on you, sitting on you and they say, Please tell me, who are you? What will you say? Oh, I am Arjun, I am computer science engineer, I am B.Tech from this. And this is our identity, no? So when immediately Lord Chaitanya asked Pratap Rudra, please tell me, who are you? He didn't say, I, I am the king of Odisha. Pratap Rudra, you must be knowing me, I am very famous. He didn't say. He said, Naham vipro na chanarapati, Name vaishyo na shudro, Naham varni na chagrahapati, No vanasto yatirva, Kintu prodhyani kila paramananda punamritabdher Gopi bartu padakamalayor Das dasanu dasaha This is what he said. He said, I am not a brahmana. I am not a kshatriya. I am not a vaishya nor a my shudra. I am not a brahmachari. I am not a, a grasta. I am not a vanprasta nor a my uh, sanyasi. Hmm. But Kintu prodhyani kila paramananda punamritabdher Gopi bartu but I am simply the servant of the servant of the servants of Krishna who is the mentor of the gopis. Like that he said. Hearing this, Lord Chaitanya became even more ecstatic and he showered all his blessings and mercy toward to King Prataprudra. This is how King Prataprudra received mercy of Lord Chaitanya. So, therefore, we are not so much concerned about whether we are Brahmana. No, Prabhu, I cannot do the service because, you know, by nature I am a Brahmana. Prabhu, I cannot do the service because by nature I am a Shudra. Please don't expect me in the morning program 4.30. I understand I can only come at 9 o'clock for Prashadam because I am a Shudra. You know, please don't expect me to, you know, take up any position or role in serving others or counseling others because I am not Kshatriya. I have nothing to do with Kshatriya, this thing. So this is all external excuses. The Hansu Prabhu says, excuses are like elbows. Everyone has got two. <laughs> so, therefore, we, um, Krishna also explains to Arjuna, when Arjuna questions, my dear Krishna, you are giving me equivocal instruction on either following, you are telling me to perform jnana as well as do karma. Please tell me only one, he tells. Krishna, Arjuna tells Krishna. Krishna, uh, Krishna tells Arjuna that you do karma yoga. Isn't it? And what is the difference between karma yoga and bhakti yoga? Karma yoga means attached to act activity. Yeah. In that also there is there too. Sakama karma yoga and nishkama karma yoga. Sakama karma yoga is attached to fruits also. That means I like jalebi so I will cook jalebi and offer to Krishna. Why? So that then I can take jalebi prasadam. <laughs> Isn't it? That is sakama karma yoga in devotee circle. Nishkama karma yoga means I like cooking. You want me to cook feast, you want me to cook for prathar or rajbog, no problem. But make sure it is only cooking service. Don't give me cleaning service. Because I am attached to cooking. So karma yoga means at one level, it is uh, fruit attached to fruits and activity. But at a more uh, higher platform, it is at least attached to activity. But what is bhakti yoga? When Krishna told Arjuna, you know, yatha itche se tatha kuru. I have spoken to Bhagavad Gita, I have done my duty. Now it is up to you. You decide what you want to do. What Arjuna said? Yeah. Karishya Vachanam? Mama. No. Tava. I will do what? <clears throat> you want. What you want. So therefore Arjuna is not giving a restriction of activity. I will only do this. He is not giving. That is Bhakti Yoga. Bhakti Yoga means you ask Krishna how can I please you? Krishna says do this. No problem. Oh you want me to uh, clean the temple hall but I'm, I thought I was a Brahmana. No, still I will do it, no problem. Sarva dharman paritajya. <laughs> All other dharmas go to drain when Krishna's instruction comes in front. Hmm. So therefore it becomes bhakti yoga. So bhakti yoga is above varnashrama. And, but generally we need daivi varnashrama system where Krishna is in the center and everyone is acting for Krishna's pleasure. And by nature we are actually engaged in a way which is uh, harmonious and synchronous with our nature. But there can be times when, like Jai Pada, Sri Prabhupada would always mention, uh, a disciple has to do whatever the Guru wants, even if he doesn't like that service. 
uh, Jayapatak Maharaj went, His Holiness Jayapatak Maharaj went to Prabhupada and said, Prabhupada, but you asked me to preach and I like to preach. And Prabhupada said, that is a good fortune. <laughs> Similarly, if we are engaged in our natures, which is not actually our nature, our nature is just to, Satchitananda is our real nature and to serve Krishna's nature. Acquired nature, if we, if we are given something which is in line with our nature, Prabhu, just, you know, just sing all day. No problem, wonderful. Because I like to sing. Prabhu, don't sing, go and do service. No problem. Though I like to sing, I will do service. That's the thing. Then we are doing Bhakti Yoga. We come to the platform of pleasing Krishna. And that's why Vaishnava is a topmost Brahmana. And therefore everyone can come to the platform of Vaishnava. Though Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra is more of nature, but when it comes to coming to the platform of Vaishnava, anyone can come. Kira, Tahunanda, Pulinda, Pulkasha, Yabira, Shumba, Yavana, Kshatriya, all these are above, beyond Shudra, more glorious than Shudra. So they all can come to the platform of Vaishnava. Anyone can take it up. So anyway, it's time. We have two minutes. If anyone has any question or comments or corrections. And maybe just before that, maybe all of you can repeat after me. Curb ignorance. Curb ignorance. Diminish passion. Diminish passion. Enrich, goodness. enrich goodness. Yeah, this is the, this is how we actually, yeah, this is sutra for enriching our Brahminical culture. Hmm? Which Prabhupada wanted, yeah. I think it wasn't Shivites and Brahmanas, it was uh, Shivites and quote-unquote Vaishnavas <laughs> cursing one another, isn't it? Because the people who were on the side of Daksha, Daksha was performing a sacrifice for Lord Vishnu. Right. Well, wasn't yeah. it, uh, he was also in one of the, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically it was, you know, those who were on the side of Shiva and those who were on the side of Daksha. Mm -hmm. So not necessarily they were pure Vaishnavas as such. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty sure there was some such curse spelt out like Brahmanas will not be proper Brahmanas in Kali Yuga, but I don't remember that section just up in my mind to quote properly. Shiva leaves the place after they start cursing. Sorry? Lord Shiva leaves the, leaves the place after they start cursing. No, when they start cursing later on, Lord Shiva comes and... That's later, huh? I think there's multiple cursing, huh? Shiva comes on something leaves the Ah, yeah, correct, correct. Yeah, so yeah, so I, I don't know exactly, but I'm pretty sure there's some curse spelt out like that. Yeah. Right. Mm. I think most important aspect even which I was thinking is even in this temple we need to have make sure that everyone has a mentor. You can choose a mentor but have a mentor first of all. And uh, today morning I was thinking if we have to be you know I was thinking from Brahmachari as ashram point of view if you want to be a long standing Brahmachari then two most important aspects I feel uh, are uh, being in the mode of goodness, you know, like you see Vrajmohan Prabhu or Acharanishta Prabhu, there's just so much good goodness, you can see that they're in goodness. <laughs> you want to see their activities. 
very evident. So just see that how we have to practice more of, cultivate more of goodness. And the second is very important, even more than cultivating goodness, is being subordinate to authorities. Very important. Why? Because the authorities can actually, we are very passionate, we are youths. We are highly passionate, but we need someone to channelize our passion. Unrestricted passion only causes destruction. So sometimes one can become independent. That independence is not very good. One can be in mode of goodness, Brahman like, but he is independent. So therefore you find devotion service in mode of goodness. There also it comes Prithak Bhava. Isn't it? 329.10 comes Prithak Bhava. Even one who is practicing mode of goodness in uh, devotion service in mode of goodness. Karma Nirhara Muddishya. So his only uh, motivation is I will purify my heart and be fully cleansed from all dirt in the heart. But I will do. Like someone will come, Prabhu, can you do the service? Prabhu, I have my reading to do. Prabhu, I have my hearing to do. My own program. Isn't it? So therefore, uh, that is also Pritak Bhava. And then comes Mad Guna, Shruti Matrena, you know, so on and so forth. Then Krishna, uh, Kapila explains devotional service on the transcendental mode. That is very powerful. So therefore, a subordinate to authorities and mode of goodness. Long, long standing brahmachari. Or even long standing devotee. Very, very important. Otherwise not, if someone is succumbing to uh, lower modes, passion ignorance, you will find, Prabhupada says this in lecture, uh, for a brahmana, he can be uh, brahmachari, grastha, vanprastha, sannyas, allowed. All the four ashrams allowed. For a kshatriya, Bra brahmachari, grastha, vanprastha, no sannyas. For a Vaishya, Brahmachari, Grastha. For a Shudra, Grastha. Hmm. Why? Because modes. So if one, if one has to be renounced order, he should do the three things. Enrich goodness, diminish passion, curb ignorance. Otherwise, there is no question of uh, going on. What was your question? If, uh, I, I hope I answered. Yeah, actually we can, if anyone is feeling that I am a special devotee, we can tell, Prabhu, you are very special, but just learn to follow. <laughs> actually, the real special devotees are those who are learning to follow. They are the best. They can be actually committing mis mistakes here, they can little overeat here and there, no problem. But if they learn to follow, they are better than those who are so-called lost here, but in their own ways. So because that austerity is also man manasi jam, born of the mind. Guru told, didn't tell, Prabhu do this austerity. He is doing on his own, no problem. Krishna doesn't take that into account. He takes into account how much you are following your superiors. So therefore that is a, that is a need for a training program. Trained, when we, we have to be trained how to follow superiors. And similarly, as we also spend time in the movement, we have to be trained how to deal with juniors. Many people also have problem with superiors because may not all superiors have set the right example. Even when we are coming from the material life, especially in the western world. Hmm. So therefore, there has to be training all. How to deal with juniors, how to deal with equals, how to deal with seniors. Guna adhikar mudam lip said. What is the next line? Anyone knows? No, that is the third line. Guna adhikar mudam lip said. Anukroshtam guna damat. Maitrim samanan anvichen. If you just, in Dhruva Maharaj's section it comes, Narada is telling Dhruva, if you just learn how to deal with your seniors, how to deal with peers and how to deal with juniors, all your miseries are gone in life, he says. Can you imagine? And in our life, where do we get miseries from? Generally seniors, we don't want to follow. Uh, with the equals, we want to say that we are better than you. I'm better devotee than you. With juniors, we want to push them down. Like that. So we just have to learn how to deal with them. Like that. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, since it's time, if anyone wants to go for prasadam, you can go. Someone is inclined towards wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> it says Have is quite 
we should only who can give correction the authority can give correction hmm? person who has relationship with the person can give a uh, correction like his grace adisham prabhu has radha maharaj in one lecture hmm, in the q and a section he said maharaj sometimes i see that someone is going away from krishna so the, but i don't have very good relationship with him should i correct or not because if i don't tell him he'll go and uh, jump in a well and die but so, but he won't listen to me if i tell him so what should i do something on these lines then radhanath mar said that uh, just imagine the person to, to be sitting on a branch of a tree on the edge of the branch of a tree and he's cutting that branch on which he's sitting on a tall tree what will happen if he cuts the branch he'll fall and break his head so now you are on the floor you are on the ground so you can tell him hey prabhu don't cut the same branch where you're sitting you will break your head but just imagine the next day the sorry the previous day you had a some bitter uh, quarrel with one another so now if you go and tell him prabhu don't cut the branch are you a fool or what you will break uh, fall and break your head what he will think this fellow is always against me so be, be, since he is telling don't cut the branch i will cut it even faster isn't it that's what randam has said so therefore if we have to give correction if you want to give any counsel to anyone first of all we need to develop relationship and we have to give invest in that relationship invest 5 units withdraw one unit that investing is appreciation appreciation encouragement mm. support withdrawal is correction prabhu everything is good but i just think if you can do like this instead of this then it can work out better like that so if you are not investing don't withdraw you don't have anything to withdraw from that minus if you simply try to withdraw it will negatively affect the person also sometimes so then you can tell his authority prabhu i think you know this is his problem this this may be just me you know i am filled with problems they fight see problems everywhere but i i think this is his problem why if you like you can take a look that's it and be detached hari krishna ranta shrimad bhagavatam ki shri prabhupad ki nitai gaur premanande